Good morning, everyone. This is Maggie Brought here to do an update on my DR Congo vlog. I'm literally falling asleep at the camera last night, trying really, really hard not to. And I went back today and I was like, well, okay. The reason I posted the video that was not as good as my normal video was because it was vlogist. I'm trying to do one a day for every day or whatever. So, you know what? I'm breaking my own rules. Maybe I'll do two today because I'm going to update my DR Congo video, right? Yeah. So, DR Congo. Uh, if you did not know, it's a two to four player strategy game with a bidding element and some action selection. It is about the the Republic of Congo, and um, as you can see here, see this graphic design. This is how they did the board too. <laughs> so these little red lines are the borders that you have to be able to see, and these weird um, kind of I don't know cartoony style lettering. Uh, are your help knowing where things are. So um, each round you're going to have insurgents pop up and they'll be like, okay, where was Sud Kivu? And like you have to kind of find it, even though you have Nor Kivu as well, and you have Kasai Oriental and Kasai Occidental. So you can't have anything on the board kind of touching those spaces or else you can't really see it. Um, though now I feel a little more acquainted with the the geography of the Congo, which is fantastic. Um, I don't, um, I don't think knowing anything about the Congo is actually going to help you or hurt you in this game, so maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's not a good thing. If their intent was to get more people aware of the situation in the Congo, um, I maybe industrious folk like myself will wiki some of the issues, but I don't feel that it was necessarily integrated or made a strong part of the game. <laughs> so as I mentioned, there's a bidding element, so each round players are going to play an amount of money. Can't be the amount of money that anyone else has played, and you only get one bid for the round. So let's say I, I pay 200, you could pay 100, but if you'd like to pay more than someone else, you must pay double the highest bid. So if you'd like to pay over my 200, it has to be 400, and then the fourth player maybe wants to pay 800. Once that's one and done, you're going to determine who came in first, second, and third, and in a two-player, you get two bids each, so you can have two ministers, and you get to choose whether you want to move the military units that round, whether you want to build on behalf of the, com the government and get kickbacks, or if you would like to affect in a, a small but important way the, the stock prices or the goods export costs. And um, so once you're done with the bidding, you're going to go through and you're going to turn over these cards. And the cards are going to put out new insurgents. They're going to tell you how many government uh, peacekeepers come out and how much money the government has for the round, um, which is all handled very well. The cards are really good. You just kind of flip them over and you walk through them. Um, after that, each player gets to take an action, and the actions can range from building up industry to producing goods to selling goods or building a city. Cities are one of the main parts, of ways of getting points in the game. And they also kind of help you further the game state along because once the uh, city points meet the target, which is kind of moving backwards on the board, that's where you know the game is over. And then you see who has the most points. Um, so, goods and bads. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm giving this game a solid, I would like to play it more. Um, the good part about it is that the gameplay itself is unique, the bidding is well handled, the different roles of having the government ministers is fun. Uh, those parts of the game are modules, so if you just were to read the base game in the rulebook, you're only going to be playing a very small part of this. Um, there are four modules. Uh, one of the negative things in the game are the support cards, which is a module of the game. Um, they are cards, you shuffle the deck, you put them out, and each round, each player can pick one. Um, a round is basically the bidding um, four different actions and insurgents uh, times and uh, selling resources, and that's a round. So these cards just prove to be way too swingy for our group. Some of them are bonkers. Just absolutely crazy. Um, one allowed me to steal uh, an industry from someone else and just kind of pay them the money for it, which 
sounds okay because they got their money back, right? But there's so few spaces on the board, especially of different resource types, that I was able to, when they had effectively made sure I did not have uh, a specific type of resource, I got that card on, a, on just by luck, and I ended up being able to just take a third type of resource, which is really good because you don't want to be locked out of that because you need different types of resources to build bigger cities. Um, the cards were very frustrating to us as a group and we tend to like higher less randomness and that was too random for us. Um, there are card games I like that are have swinging cards. Dominant Species is the one I can think of off the top of my head in innovation but this this just didn't seem to fit the game style because what is good about the game style is that you kind of cooperatively have to open up trade routes. Um, on the board, if you'd like the big dollars for selling your resources, and who doesn't, you must get to one of the sides. So you can get to a port or you can get to any of the sides. And that's how you're going to export goods out of the country. When we played two player, we kind of had to cooperatively open a route and keep it safe because the insurgents kept popping up there. And in three or four players, it's it's it was it's a little easier to definitely keep those trade routes open. You don't have to work as cooperatively, but there's still kind of a um, pairing up element. And we're a little worried that that goes a little too far with two people agreeing to help each other and the other people kind of being out of it. Um, still very interesting. The board got very full, uh, so maybe they could have used a little bigger board or a double-sided board for like a two to three player experience and then a four player experience. And I know that this is based on real geography, so maybe that's what stopped them from doing so. But I do think just because they're providences doesn't mean that that's how they had to you know, divvy up the board. Again, this is me not being a thematic player, so I wanted the game to function a little bit better and I felt it was a little too tight. So we're going to play without the cards again, and then possibly without the Baron cards. So everyone got dealt a Baron, and that gives you a unique starting space and a unique starting capital. Um, I got a really swanky spot. It was a, a it's not Bus Congo. I was in Bundundu, which is right next to where the port is, and most of the other players started on the other side of the board. Um, I don't know. We don't. We're still kind of mulling this one over. It is really interesting. Um, two of us thought the gameplay was really cool and unique. Uh, Brian thought that it was just kind of boring, but um, we've got some more plays of it to go. But I did want to get it on a vlog as a first impression. Um, I this is vlog is day three, so it might as well be now. Um, and then. One thing I'll say about the game as well is that uh, the the graphic style, the cartoony graphic style, again, I just, I don't feel like it makes any sense. The hope out of horror thing and implying that the Congo is dangerous and everything, and just having these like comic-y, weird yellow words just strikes me as odd. Um, for anyone that saw my pictures from when we were playing, um, the, the card quality, this card stock, um, especially the support cards, they're this weird like linen finish but the cards feel really cheap. Um, the paper money doesn't bother me. The paper money is pretty nice. It's got cute little rhinos on it um, and it's flat on, it's blank on one side because you're keeping all your money hidden. Um, but paper money does not bother me as much as it bothers most people. I, I think it's just fine, and sometimes I like it. I, I think pretty paper money is better than ugly chits. Um, the other night we were playing uh, Norn Burke, and it has those little itty bitty chits that you have to hide under a vault, and I would have rather had paper money, honestly. Uh, so <laughs> that's, that's my impression. But uh, it was good to see you all, and I will talk to you soon.